Josh Giddy logs another triple double, and the Thunder snap their losing streak. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Lockdown Thunder podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, media member, and beat writer for InsideTheThunder.com, Ryland Styles. Follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're diving into the Oklahoma City Thunder snapping their three-game losing streak. Josh Giddy posts another triple-double and the Thunder clinch home court advantage in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. This show is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA right now, or use code all lowercase locked in NBA to get a first deposit match up to $100. So in this game, the Thunder are, you know, reeling off of their first three-game losing streak of the season. They have no SGA, they have no J-Dub, and they found a way to buckle down late and get a win. Overall, this was a good win. I know that the, you know, I know that the Hornets are not a good team and the Hornets are not someone who um a 50-something win team should have problems with, but when you consider you were without SGA, without J-Dub and you really needed to get this win, especially with some of the results that you saw around the Western Conference, the, the Clippers making that big comeback over the Cavs and uh, all the standings watch that's going to go on. You really needed to get this win, and the Thunder did. Now, uh, it wasn't a, a beautiful win, right? You, you grew a 14-point lead and saw that dissipate and eventually saw uh, the Hornets take a four-point lead late in the fourth quarter. Uh, but surviving four lead changes all in that fourth quarter, uh, five ties, it, it was an impressive game to will out at the end, especially against a very motivated Charlotte Hornets team. I mean, you can just see the intensity and the the just kind of revenge aspect, if you want to you know call it that, from Poku, from Trey Mann, from these guys popping off the screen. And the Hornets did a good job. I mean, both teams had 36 rebounds. Uh, the Hornets had 18 turnovers, but they they turned over the Thunder 16 times. Typically, that number is a wide, wide, wide disparity favoring Oklahoma City. Paints points were tied at 50 apiece. The Thunder typically win those. Second chance points went to OKC 18 to nine. The Thunder typically on the wrong side of that one, and the Thunder got back to to taking care of business in the fast break. They dominated 19 to uh, six against Charlotte. This was a very offensive game. The Thunder shot 51% from the floor and 50% from three, but it also came with some uh, defensive stops at timely moments for OKC down the stretch. Uh, the Hornets shot 54% from the floor, 42% from three, uh, and 78% from the free throw line. I, I think that you know you can pick this game apart left, right, and center. The, the only end goal in a game like this, in a situation like this, we are trying to keep pace in the West uh, is to survive in advance and is to uh, just get the win. You're going to see SGA return against Sacramento on Tuesday and, you know, go from there. But in terms of this game against Charlotte, you had to get the win. And a big part of why you got the win was Josh Giddy. Once again, he comes through. And once again, you're left saying that this is all repeatable stuff. Second straight Sunday of a triple double. He puts up 20 points, 13 rebounds, 13 assists, and a steal. And the biggest play of the game happened from Josh Giddy. And the biggest play of the game happened when Josh Giddy comes flying in on the offensive glass, pokes a rebound out of the hands of the Hornets, and kicks it over to Aaron Wiggins for three, cuts it down uh, to a one point game. It might have even tied the game, but I think it was a one point game when that happened. Like that just reeled the Thunder back into it with around two minutes to go or, or less than that in the first quarter. And so like that is a game changing play. And that is a game changing play that Josh Giddy can use his length and his size to his advantage, no matter who he's sharing the floor with, no matter if his shots are falling, no matter the circumstances. And so that was a really heads up play by Giddy also had the, uh, you know, 
go ahead, assist to Isaiah Joe for three. And you can just see how he made his presence felt on the glass. You, you tied in the rebound category uh, and Chet had 10 of them. Josh Giddy had 13 of them. Like, so that was your source of rebounding in this game. And it was nice to see Josh Giddy uh, making an impact there. He got to the line six uh, for six free throw attempts, went five for six at the charity stripe. You love to see him getting downhill harder, which is what's getting uh, him the ability to shoot free throws. It's been a constant uh, discussion point around his career has been how can he elevate himself at getting free throws. He's talked about it. The coaching staff has talked about it. And over this last stretch, he's gotten to the line more. That's something that you really like to see from Josh Giddy, And it's a direct result of playing with more offensive force uh, and, and getting downhill harder. One for one from three, but that one three was a you know contested little jab step three. A lot of confidence in that shot and also wasn't forcing uh, the threes either. Uh, went 46% from the floor overall, you know, which I think for someone in his position, right? Like as someone who's played 37 minutes and was asked to take 15 shots, like that was a good mark for him. Obviously, there's some shots in there you want to have back overall, but uh, I think that Josh Giddy played a really good game. His plus 15 uh, would also tell that story as well. I think that Josh Giddy deserves major flowers for the simple fact of, uh, yes, each offensive number looks good for the Thunder in this game. Their, free, their, their field goal percentage, their three-point percentage, it all looks good for the Thunder in this game. They scored 121 points. But if you watch that game, you you consistently throughout this week have seen the difference. Having Josh Giddy on the floor makes as a guy who is tying together this offense, as a guy who's setting the table, as a guy who is putting guys in the right position uh, and just leading the charge offensively. Uh, he's been able to do that at a very high clip. When he's not on the floor, you see the offense sputter a little bit. You see the Thunder uh, let other teams back into the game as they did in this one. Uh, and so I think that uh, more importantly than than even the triple-double was just the presence of him for the offense to uh, be at the helm of it for this team during this stretch of games. So Josh Giddy was awesome. Uh, I think the Chet Holmgren really had an impact in this game doing a lot of different things. He He did the dirty work collecting loose balls. Uh, he he got to the rim and and you know, slammed in transit. You know, tra slammed in traffic. Uh, he knocked down threes. He got a double double. He got blocks at the rim. Like he really had his hand in really everything for the Thunder. Twenty points, three blocks, two steals, two assists, ten rebounds. Went three for six from three and shot fifty percent from the floor. All in thirty minutes. Uh, Chet had an all around really good game, and it was you know impressive. Because it's it's easier to have good games with the more layers you add to you know, the Thunder offense. Like if you add SGA, you add J Dub, uh, it's easier to to have better offensive games because they're going to take the attention away from you. They're going to have gravity that naturally uh, draws attention away from you. And in addition to that, they are also better playmakers with the ball in their hands to set you up as a play finisher uh, if you're a guy like Chet Holmgren. So to have a game like this, whenever you know, you didn't have a lot of, of table setting outside of Josh Giddy uh, was really good for Chet to, to kind of adjust as he's had to do all week. He's had to figure out ways uh, to adjust all week long. So uh, I think that that's an important piece of this too for Chet and for Josh especially. Uh, those are the two guys who deserve a lot of credit and so does Aaron Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins finally... Uh, is getting the the run that we've been asking for, not to this extent, obviously. Uh, anyway, playing him 25 minutes or 35 minutes is not going to be something that you can do whenever that you know, Shea and J-Dub are on the floor and, and they're healthy. Uh, but he's showing you why, while it's not going to be 35 minutes, it should be a huge role in the postseason. It should be 20-plus minutes. So whenever you're looking at that scale of like, oh, well, you know, Wiggins plays about you know 12 to 20 minutes and sometimes 15 and it's sometimes you know, kind of all jumbled up there. In the postseason, things should lean way closer to 20 plus for Wiggins than it should to 15 or 12 minutes per game for Wiggins because Aaron Wiggins just makes things happen and he can do a lot. He can score in a variety of ways. He can uh, defend in a variety of ways. Uh, he can play make whenever he's needed to or asked to, at the very least, be a connective playmaker with every lineup. And speaking of every lineup, he can play 
with every single lineup. So we'll talk about him. We'll talk about Casey Wallace. We'll talk about not reevaluating uh, that Hornets trade and more all coming up. But first, I want to say right now, a better good friends over at Prize Picks. Check out Prize Picks right now. Prize Picks is awesome, uh, and it's the best way to play daily fantasy sports. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million uh, members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You pick more or less on two or more players' stats, and you can just have your winnings roll in. Uh, March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off in the month of April. Uh, so uh, it's the it's part of Price Picks's uh, ability to get you the men and women's college basketball uh, options for tonight's national championship game. You can go uh, check out uh, Purdue versus UConn on the Price Picks app. Also, speaking of basketball, playoff action is here. You can win a hundred times your money on Price Picks uh, as you uh, and the world's best players take the game to the new level during the basketball's postseason. Uh, and you should go there because next week starts the postseason, starts the play-in tournament, and you can win 100 times your money because Price Picks has uh, this option that you can win 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Uh, you can turn $10 into $1,000 uh, with hockey uh, and basketball entries today on Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Check them out today at Price Picks. It has quite quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types uh, that you uh, want and that can make Price Picks and has made Price Picks the number one fantasy sports app. So go download the app today. Use code Locked in NBA for the first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com, uh, code Locked on NBA. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you, talking Thunder basketball. Folks, we're diving into this game against the Hornets, and Aaron Wiggins shot 55% from the floor, two for six from three. Those were timely threes, though, by the way, for Wiggins. Uh, two rebounds, five assists, six Steals, six steals, including diving on a loose ball late, uh, which really turned the game over uh, for the Thunder and, and helped them uh, regain the advantage and help them beat the Hornets. Only two turnovers, uh, plus three, a 26-point night, a team high, 26 points for Aaron Wiggins. This is a guy that can score on the perimeter. He can score in the mid-range. He can score at the rim. Uh, he, he can be a, a, a playmaker for you, obviously. Um a more connective role where he's able to swing the ball. He's able to, to get it where it needs to be uh, in the half court offense. And then he can also vehemently push the pace for you offensively uh, in transition off of a rebound, off of a, one of his six steals. He can get the steal, throw this behind the back pass up ahead uh, to finish off the, the transition opportunity. Like he can just do it all. And he's a guy who can defend one through four. Uh, he's athletic enough to, if you, if he was put in a bind where he was at the rim and had to meet somebody there, uh, he'd at least challenge the shot. You're going to want to play Aaron Wiggins' big minutes in the postseason. And Aaron Wiggins is going to be a guy that like you just are going to see get more national attention, one, as this team watches him, two, as he gets more minutes, uh, or should at least get more minutes in the postseason. Casey Wallace, I think, continues to show you why what, twofold. One, he continues to show you that, like, wow, this is a guy who's an impact rookie, which is very rare in general, especially an impact rookie who's asked to – uh, defend at a high level and just knock down threes. He's able to do that two for four from three. He defends at a high level. Gives you 10 points in this game. But also the second thing is how interesting next year will be. And it, that's, that's something that we'll have a whole summer to talk about. Um, but I think lost in the, in the everyday, just, Plugging away at the standings, you know, there's a, there's a game every other night. The Thunder have not had consecutive off days in a month. Like lost in that, and, and you're so narrow focused on this year because, frankly, this team is talented enough to go on a massive run. Like the, it would not shock anyone if this team winds up in the conference finals, or heck, if this team winds up in the NBA finals. It would not be just stunningly shocking. Uh, lost in that is one how young this team still is. Two how how, how you know this is going to be a long form. A runway here for this core and three a guy like Kason Wallace who I think has shown you that he can be a high 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 level high 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 level three and D option uh as just this corner 
sitting, uh, floor spacing, cutting play finisher. But I think that in these games like this, where there's no Shea, where there's no J dub. And especially since the all-star break, you've started to see these flashes of, of what he can do on the ball of what he can do as a creator. And that's something that he's not gotten the chance to hone in on or to develop almost at the cost of how good he's been. Like, right? Cause you're not going to send Casey Wallace down to the G league and let him get on ball reps because he's just been too good. He's been too vital to your rotation. Uh, and so that's something that he will not get to really tap into until his first summer of development in the NBA. And so I think that that's an example of a guy who, while everything looks like it's just as best as it'll get right now, that's an example of a guy who I believe next year we could be looking at in a totally different light and again, be wondering how did the Thunder have all these luxuries? How did the Thunder have all these quality basketball players? Because you look at this team, this team has gotten insane injury luck. And yet Shea's missed six of the last seven games and Jada missed it, missed, you know, the, the four straight games. And in that time, you were desperately missing someone who could just simply create space for this Thunder offense. So it's it's not um it's not anything too crazy to think that Casey Wallace, who was a good on ball player in college, can do the same thing in the NBA as he's shown you these sprinkles of flashes uh here recently. So I'm, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in to see how that kind of goes down. But I think that Casey and, and Wiggins were both two huge pieces in in this team win for the Thunder, as was Lindy Waters. Look, you know, we can have our quorums with, with Lindy Waters and we can kind of have our uh, discussion points of, of his role and, and uh, his fit with the organization. The one thing that you cannot deny about Lindy Waters, the organization trusts him. They trust him to go out there and to make plays in this system and understand the system, understand you know how to uh, play this team style of switching defense, understand uh, where to get to on the floor offensively. They trust him in games like this. And the other thing you cannot take away from Lady Waters is he's going to stay ready. Now the results, you know, can vary. Like you, you might, you might stay ready and you take good shot selections and you just miss, you know, that's, that can happen, uh, but he stays ready to play his role whenever he's not been called on pretty much all season long because of how, how good this team has been after being a play in a postseason rotational player last year for the Thunder. So I, I think that with Lindy Waters, um, credit to him, 14 minutes, giving you 10 uh, points, a plus 10 in this game, hit a nice movement three. Uh, credit to him also, as we said on the last show, for becoming this really quality defender because of his activeness uh, and because of his ability to switch and his athleticism that many people, including myself, did not think he could get to uh, coming out of college. He's gotten there now. He's developed that now. And the, the interesting part of Lindy Waters is this. You can have all the debates you want to, but at the, at the end of the day, you're talking about the 14th man, the 15th man in the roster. That's the ceiling for Lindy Waters, which is still good. That's a ceiling that like 99% of basketball players never reach. Uh, so when you're looking and evaluating 19, you know, 15th men on the roster, how many more actually better 15th men are there in the NBA? In the sense of that you can put your trust into as a coach to run your system very well. And he has a shot to go two for three from three in 14 minutes. He has a shot to play, you know, quality defense in 14 minutes without fouling. Like there's not that many options who, who, who can do what Lindy Waters is built to be able to do. Now I have my qualms with the fact that like he's built as a sharpshooter, but uh, he misses way too many you know, quality looks uh, to actually be a sharpshooter. My thing is though, like, if he actually, you know, he actually has, you know, this has been a two year sample size now of him being a much improved defender. If that's actually you know, came around, which I believe it has, the, the capitalizing on shots should, in theory, be the easy part for Lindy Waters. So again, I would ask, and you, you can, you know, make your uh, own assessments, I'd ask how many better 15th men are there in the NBA? And so the trust factor and, and the, the embodiment of staying ready that Lindy Waters provides was big in this game. 
you don't win this game without Lindy Waters in 14 minutes. That's going to get lost here within within a day. It might already be lost um, uh, about how well he performed. But credit to him and credit to the Thunder for, for kind of gritting their teeth and getting this win to snap this uh, losing streak heading into the final homestand before the playoffs. Coming up, the Thunder have clinched home court advantage in the playoffs, so they're going to be at home for a long, long, long time. And let's not reevaluate this Hornets trade, please. But first, I want to say right now about our good friends over at LinkedIn. Check out LinkedIn right now because when you're looking, uh, as a small business for hiring, we know that you want to find qualified professionals that are right for your role, but you got to check out LinkedIn jobs because LinkedIn jobs is here to help you get those right professionals because LinkedIn is not like another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of over a billion professionals who are uh, there to make it the right place for you to get your hire. It gives you access to professionals that you cannot find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all uh, that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy. When you get more qualified candidates, it's so easy. In fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses, you're wearing many, many hats, and you might not have the time or the resources to make a hire and go through a thorough, you know, or go through a, an expansive hiring process. But LinkedIn continues to find ways to make that process easier. Uh, they have just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions and makes the process quicker uh, for you. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked in MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked in MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply at linkedinjobs.com slash locked in MBA. We're back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Thank you so much for making us your first lesson every single morning, every single day. We're here for you. Talking Thunder basketball. Folks, we are looking at this game from the Hornets. And Poku plays well. He dunks on Jay Will and gives a little flex. Uh, you know, you see Trey Mann play well, Michich play well, even Bertaz is in on the action. And it's easy to just try to revisit that trade. The bottom line is. The way you evaluate that trade is the same way you evaluated it in February. Sure, Poku and Michich and Mann, not so much Bertans. Bertans, like we kind of know what he is. You know, zebra is not going to change its stripes or whatever that saying is. Uh, you know, Bertans is going to be a, a sharp shooting defensive liability. And that's what he's been for Charlotte. You know, and he's gotten on the floor for Charlotte, and that's been great. Uh, but Poku and Michich and Mann. Everyone understood, and you can go back and listen to the show. Like everyone understood that like those guys had potential. Those guys could be uh, NBA players. They just were never going to be that in Oklahoma City. They weren't going to get the minutes. They were not going to get the opportunity. And so for them, it's a win because they get to go to an organization who has nothing but opportunity to give and uh, and go and try to not, not revive, but try to elongate their NBA career uh, with an opportunity to showcase their skill. And for the Thunder, you clear up cap space and you get Gordon Hayward, who on paper uh, should and still should impact your your playoff rotation as a floor spacing, uh, you know, three point shooting veteran has not been the case thus far. He'll be out against Sacramento again with another injury, so we'll see, you know, what what that ends up being. But you did clear up cap space. The bottom line is, the alternative of that is not making a trade and and having Man and Micic and Poku not play minutes at all. And furthermore, like the most important part is. Man and Mitra Shimpoku have not done anything in Charlotte that, that that you did not see them do in Oklahoma City. This version of Trey Mann is rookie year Trey Mann. Like, whenever he got opportunity, he played this way. He didn't fit with the Thunder, even while playing this way. Whenever Poku got opportunity and was healthy, he played this way. You know, he, I think that Poku's playing with more offensive force. That's a big key for him. Great job there from Poku, uh, which you saw last year before the injury as well. Uh, but other than that, Poku's been the same player. Uh, that he's been, they did not, you know, they were not on the same page as all at all, you know, th as the organization with Poku. So, uh, Michich, like the same thing, Michich in January played this way and played this style of basketball, but you could not project him playing in, in the postseason on a postseason roster in a postseason environment, uh, defensively. And that adds to the layer of every year, there's a billion players who are playing on, on teams like Charlotte who might be playing above their skis, who are playing teams that are unmotivated, 
who are able to rack up these stats. Like, are you buying into Jalen Green right now? Like, if your opinion of Jalen Green has not changed off of his last March, then your opinions of Poku and Man and Michich should not change either. Like, that's the bottom line. And so I think that this is a great win for them, for the, for the, 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 the trade in general, because Poku, Man, and Michich are getting the chance to say, hey, hey, you can still use me on an NBA roster. Trey Mann should get another opportunity. Poku, Michich, like these guys are showing, like, hey, like we can we can play NBA basketball. We just couldn't play NBA basketball there. And that's what happens sometimes. This is a very intricate and interesting system. It's why whenever you look at the draft, uh, people always talk about, oh, he's not a Thunder guy or he is a Thunder guy because it takes, they're looking for something very, very, very specific and something that those three guys just did not do. Uh, and again, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Like these guys are not doing anything revelatory. Like these guys are not uh, reinventing themselves in Charlotte. They're playing the exact same way that they played in Oklahoma City when they got minutes. And the Thunder took a gamble on Gordon Hayward while also freeing up cap space, which could be big in the summertime. Um, and so it is what it is. But the Thunder also, with that win, clinched home court advantage. They can finish no worse than fourth uh, in the NBA postseason standings. I think that they're going to finish top three, uh, clearly. But it's just in general, it's just great to see that this Thunder team, who uh, is not that far removed from winning 22 games, 24 games, and last year, needing help to get into the play-in, uh, they've now leaped into a 50-plus win season and home court advantage in the West for a team that was projected to win 44 games, for a team that um, you know people were saying like if they can find a way to get top six, it'd be great for them in this Western Conference. For a team that people still projected to be a play-in level team, for them to ensure themselves with four games to play, that they'll be hosting a playoff series it's really impressive. And, you know, during the stretch, people kind of had the chicken little skies falling. They're still only a game out of first place with a tiebreaker over Denver. Denver and, and Minnesota have to play each other, like, you know, here on the 10th, I believe it is. So, you know, nothing's off the table just yet. The only thing that's on the table for sure is that the Thunder will be hosting a playoff game either next Saturday or next Sunday which is going to be awesome, the return of the postseason in, in the Paycom Center. Speaking of awesome, you don't have to wait that long to see playoff basketball in the Paycom Center. The OKC Blue will play on Thursday in between these Thunder games. They'll play on Thursday in the Paycom Center uh, for the G League Championship, the G League Finals against the Maine Celtics. That starts on Tuesday in Maine. Uh, G League uh, Blue return on Thursday for Game 2. It's a best-of-three format. Game three in Maine, if necessary, is on tax day. So make sure you go check that out as well. So uh, until tomorrow, where we are going to have your mailbag questions and we're going to uh, just do it up big uh, for that show, we're going to talk about your mailbag questions from the draft, talk about Shays returning, try to map out these final four home games uh, on that show. We'll be back after the Kings game to recap it, after the Spurs game to recap it. Friday will be a stock watch episode, our, our final stock watch heading into the postseason. Uh, who's going up, who's going down, what should the playoff rotation look like. That'll be a fun show Friday. Saturday, we're going to recap the Bucks game. Sunday, recap the Mavs game. Monday, we have a playoff preview episode where we're actually going to get to preview the playoffs, preview the Thunder matchup, uh, and so much more. And that whole week, we'll have special guests uh, coming in and out. We'll have our crossover with our Locked On host. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun stuff that whole week uh, leading into game one of the playoffs. And then the playoffs get here, and it's playoffs every single day from, from the time that that Mavericks came concludes all the way through the end of the Thunder postseason. You'll have a podcast every single day, Monday through Sunday. And on game days, you'll, you'll have bonus content on game days. Trust me on that. But until tomorrow, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore styles. Make sure you go to inside the Thunder uh, on sports illustrated for all your Thunder written content needs and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe across YouTube. Um, and any other, any other podcasting platform that you're on, uh, subscribe, leave a review, leave a comment. Until tomorrow, be good and be good to one.